Alright everybody, I'm going to do this right now. It is indeed Tuesday, so that means you will see this video on Thursday afternoon. Um, first off, we have the Jags and the Bengals as far as the NFL going into week four. Yes, that's right. We're already four weeks into the NFL season. I know it's crazy, right? But the Jags and the Bengals, this isn't a matchup that you want to watch, especially on a Thursday night. We might as well just skip talking about this. But speaking of things we need to skip talking about, the Titans and the Jets, same things. Let's skip over this game. There's nothing really to talk about here. The Jags and the Jets are both bad teams with poorly run organizations, and we don't need to talk about that. We don't need to talk about that. But here's a game we do need to talk about, a game of suck. A game of two teams that do not know what in the world they're doing because they're both miserable franchises in NFC North matchup with the Gus Bus on the call. And I know, I know, I keep shilling Gus Johnson in these videos, but I mean, more power to the brothers, am I right? <laughs> and the Lions and the Bears, I mean, both these teams are in a weird position right now. The Lions are 0-3, Bears 1-2 with a weird victory against the the Bengals, you know, um, and I, I just genuinely don't know what's going to happen, you know, you got Jared Goff versus the newcomer, Justin Fields, you know, Goff, you know, he hasn't looked particularly excellent or anything like that, and Justin Fields is still, you know, trying to get the ropes in, you know, as far as being a starter in the NFL, and what this Bears team is going to have to do is get it together. They're going to have to get it together real soon, you know. There's no time to be wasted when it comes to, you know, when it comes to this game. There's no time wasted at this point. Um, the Lions, I, I just genuinely don't know. I don't even know if I'm going to watch this game. There's a lot of weird games in the noon window this week, and I don't know why it's so weird. But, um... I, I don't know. This is this one is this one's intriguing uh, on a, on a level of who's probably going to be in last place in the NFC North. Um, Colts Dolphins is also intriguing, but for different reasons. You know, Tua is still injured. Jacoby Brissett still starting. The Colts have a litany of problems themselves. You know, especially with Wentz. You know, a quarterback, but I, I, I genuinely don't know what either of these two teams are going to do either. Like, this has been a confusing year for both of them so far. And I, I, I'm just sitting there like, what, 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 do we, what, do we, what do we say about this? I, I think I might watch Browns Vikings. Because, I mean, I know the Browns have looked, you know, damn good aside, you know. You know, aside from collapsing late against the Chiefs. But, <laughs> they've looked... They look like a cohesive unit out these past couple weeks of the Vikings. You know, this is their first big win of the season. Their first win of the season, actually. You know, they beat the Seahawks and they beat them, you know, pretty handily. I wonder if the same thing could happen to the Browns because, I mean, you know, like Kirk Cousins has this team, you know, looking like a team that can do something, do a little bit of damage, not particularly too much damage, but I think this Vikings team has enough in the tank to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Browns. I really think they do. Um, Washington and the Falcons, there's really no reason to talk about this game. I mean, again, it's... Uh, speaking of my Cowboys, we'll talk about my Cowboys in a minute, but I mean, it's it's Washington and the Falcons. Both these teams, you know, again, have struggled this year, and I don't know why the Falcons have played three straight NFC, team, NFC East teams to start the season, though. I don't know what's wrong with that. What's wrong with that? You know, because, I mean, they looked awful against the Eagles, and they barely scraped out a win against the Giants. Like, we're talking barely scraped out a win, so I don't I don't know, man. I really don't know, you know about this game. Texans-Bills is another game that really doesn't scream, you know, a great game to me, because, I mean, the Texans are just, they're just still the Texans, you know. This is... This was a team at one point that was looking, you know, to get past the wild card round each year after winning the AFC South, you know, like for years and years and years, and yet they couldn't get out of it, and their own organization collapsed around them thanks to Bill O'Brien, and, you know, things got worse from there with the Deshaun Watson stuff, you know, and the Bills are still riding high, you know, they're still, they're still looking like a solid team, you know, obviously expectations, you know, 
are high for the Bills, and they can't overlook the Texans. You can't look over anybody. This is any given Sunday. We all know this. You can't overlook anybody in the NFL. Giants-Saints is another weird matchup because, again, you know, the Giants are 0-3, and, and it feels like they should have won a game already, especially that Thursday night against um, Washington. They should have won that game there. But, um, you know, like it's weird. The Saints have been inconsistent already because they beat up on the Packers, but they got beat up by the by the Panthers. Like I don't I don't know, man. I don't know. And I mean, speaking of teams, I don't know about which, which Chiefs team are we going to see? Because we know the Eagles aren't very good, but what Chiefs team are we going to see out there? Because if Jalen Hurts starts exploiting that Chiefs defense, it's going to be we're going to be laughing at the Chiefs defense. You know, for a long time this year, we're going to be laughing at them pretty much all year because Chiefs defense needs to improve. I mean, obviously they still have the playmakers there. You know, they still got Dirty Dan Sorensen. They still got Tyron Matthew. I mean, I mean, the Chiefs have guys on defense. You know, Fred Clark's still there. You know, they have guys on defense that can do stuff. But I mean, I'm just sitting here like this team has been exploited for pretty much the past three weeks now. Like they got eviscerated in the run game by the Ravens. They got torched by the Browns and the Chargers. They got torched in the air. So I don't know what's wrong with this Chiefs team and the Eagles are just a dumpster fire of themselves. I mean, obviously Nick Sharani, you know, or whatever his name is, new head coach for the Eagles, you know, obviously, you know, growing pain still with Jalen Hurts. You know, he's only this is only what his eighth start in the NFL. And I mean the Eagles said their defense was a hard-hitting defense, and obviously that didn't happen, you know, against the Cowboys and against the 49ers, you know. It didn't happen. It didn't It didn't look like a hard-hitting team, you know, against those two teams right there. Speaking of my Cowboys, in, the, in really the, the game of the new window, because, I mean, this is the, really the only compelling matchup of teams that are over 500. I think this is the only matchup in that window of teams over 500. But the Panthers... They look strong with Stab Darnold. My Cowboys, you know, they, they're a little banged up a little bit. I know Amari Cooper was a little bit hurt. I know CD was a little bit hurt, you know, too. It was either him or Gallup that got that was a little bit banged up. But I mean, this Cowboys team has been resilient on defense, especially this year. And the Panthers, you know, same thing. Both these teams are going to have some damn good defenses, you know, riding into this game. You know, I mean, this is going to be fun. For once, you know, an early Cowboys game. I love early Cowboys games because it gives, you know, I, I, I think I've been a proponent of early games for the Cowboys for the longest time because I don't like it when the media puts the Cowboys in the spotlight like this. And, you know, you know, you know they usually do. You got Skip Bayless always whining and crying. You got guys over at ESPN that like the Cowboys, like Michael Irvin, always whining and crying about the Cowboys. And I mean, this Panthers team is gonna be tough. It, it ain't, it ain't no, ain't no joke about it. This Panthers team is going to be one tough out for the Cowboys this see this season. You know, it's gonna be one of the tougher battles this year. I mean, the Panthers have really just surprised everybody so far. I mean, they they have smacked everybody in the mouth so far, and I don't want the same to happen to my Cowboys. Not at home. Um. So. We go to the late window now, and, you know, uh, I mean, I'm looking at these late window games, and two of these games jump out at me. Two of these games jump out at me for the wrong reasons. Two of them jump out at me for the right reasons. Seahawks 49ers, like, the Seahawks blew it against the Titans. They got manhandled, basically, by the Vikings. And, like, it's it's just a weird time for... For the Seahawks, like I don't, I don't know why this team is one and two. This team should be one and two with the talent they have. I mean, come on, this is the Seahawks we're talking about here. This team has always been a playoff contender, you know, for years now since Russell Wilson has came to this team. And the 49ers are still trying to find an identity that makes sense. You know, it seems like you know Kyle Shanahan has his group. You know. You know, he has this group. You know, for the 49ers, they have they have things together a little bit, but not to make a team that could look like they could, you know, beat you. Because I mean, they did beat the Packers, and we saw how that game went for most of that game against the Packers. We saw how it went. It was just not not a good time. The 49ers were often getting off the field very quickly. 
and you know, 49 is all about ball control and stuff like that. So, you know, again, like they, they want a balanced unit out there on offense and stuff like that. But I still got George. You still got George Kittle, you know, tearing it up. But he hasn't looked the same either this year because I mean, it, it just I mean, the 49ers just don't look explosive at all this year. They don't look explosive. They don't look like an explosive team. You know that that um. That, 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 I mean, they just don't look like the team uh, of the, that went to the Super Bowl a couple years back. They just don't look like it. I mean, what can you say about that? Steelers, Packers, same reason. You know, the Steelers. You, you, we we really don't know what's wrong with them. And like I saw, I saw a projection today, like just today, that says, "Oh, here's Big Ben's replacement in the NFL mock drafts, Matt Coral." I didn't know we were doing that now. Calm, calm yourselves. Can y'all wait a minute before y'all start talking about the NFL draft and Matt Coral? Like, aren't there other guys on the Steelers roster right now that are at quarterback? Like, is Mason Rudolph still there? I know Mason Rudolph is not good, but is he still there? Like, the Steelers, Steelers just puzzle me. And, I mean, after the Packers got smacked around by the Saints in week one, they've been on a tear. They beat up on the Lions, obviously. And, I mean, well, it wasn't really a beat-em-up type game, but they've let, but they've let teams back in it. They, they, it feels like the Packers were going to blow out the Lions. The Lions, you know, kept the game for a little while. Did They felt like they were going to blow out the 49ers, too. But, again, the 49ers kept making it a game. And I, I, I'm still kind of iffy on this Packers team myself. You know, obviously, you know, you know, there people are gonna say, oh, well, this is the Aaron Rodgers show. This is this is all about Aaron Rodgers and Vontae Adams and Aaron Jones and all those guys like that. You know, it feels like, you know, every time, you know, it, it circulates back to Aaron Rodgers for the Packers. It circulates all the way back to Aaron Rodgers. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not that at all. This Packers team has issues on defense when we know they have issues on defense Kevin King's still there <laughs> in corner you know I don't think the Packers have really improved anything and the Steelers you know, they still have a decent attack out there they still I don't think the Steelers have an O-line I think they're still banged up on the D-line if I'm not mistaken you know I'm not sure how long T.J. Watt is out um, and I know they have some other injuries as well but uh, it's, it's gonna be weird to watch this game you know especially I don't know if I'm gonna watch this. In all honesty, I know I know my, my quarterback, my old quarterback Tony Romo, is gonna be at this game. But you know, I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to watch this, man. Because I mean, the Steelers just look that bad. Like, like the Steelers don't look like a team that's gonna go anywhere this year. And I mean, you know, Steelers fans have just been, you know, they've been like, yeah, we we kind of accepted our fate. It, it it's done. It, it, us going into the playoffs, it's done for a little while. It's it's done, man. Um, mm, but Cardinals Rams though, oh boy, Stafford versus Murray. Oh boy, you, you you talk about teams with good receiving cores. Both these teams have good receiving cores. You know, I'm thinking this is going to be another high scoring game, another high scoring affair. For the cards and the Rams. I don't know why this is stuck at 305, you know, the late regional window. I don't know why this is going to be stuck like this, you know, so late where nobody can see this game. Because this is going to be one damn good game right here, man. It's going to be one hell of a game. I really hate, you know, these, really hate these windows like this, man. Um, should be double header windows for both networks every Sunday, ain't you know, God, my goodness. The cards, the Rams, whew. It's gonna be one hell of a fight. It's gonna be one hell of a fight. You know, obviously, you know, the cards they they've looked a little suspect over these couple weeks now that we've seen them, but they're still a solid team all around. They get they got they're getting they're getting they're finally getting that air raid offense, you know, together. They're finally getting it together. Rams, same thing, they're getting things together, they're making it look easy out there. I mean they pretty much dismantled the Buccaneers. And, I mean, they, well, of course, they dismantled the Bears. The Bears were that bad. But the Rams, they look like a solid, solid team, man. Very good team. Um, Ravens-Broncos is a matchup that doesn't seem like a matchup that, you know, people are going to be talking about on paper. But this is going to be one hell of a matchup as well, man. 
Like, have this game get, have this game, you know, get intriguing now. The Ravens have been giving us thrillers the past three weeks now, and we're looking for another one here, man. I'm, I'm excited. You know, the Broncos, you know, they took care of three easy teams. They took care of three easy opponents over the first three weeks. So now it's time for Teddy Bridgewater to get his team, you know, get this team ready for some real competition in the NFL. You know, and I know. Every team is a real team in the NFL, but we're talking, you know, not the Jags or the Jets or anything like that. We're talking, you know, teams that look solid, look like a cohesive unit out there on offense and defense. We're talking Ravens-Broncos is going to be one hell of a matchup in Mile High, and I, I cannot wait for this game. This is... This is this is this is the other game that's gonna get stuck. You know, not everybody's going to see this game unless you are a streamer like myself. Hint, hint. But um, if you, um, I guarantee you, the, when the maps come out on 506 Sports, and I love I love the guys' work by the way. You know, always giving us the good sauce. Um, but I guarantee you, only people in Baltimore and Denver are gonna be able to see. You know, the Ravens and the Broncos duke it out. I guarantee you that. Because most of the country is going to be subject to watching the Steelers whole line. And I, I, I don't really want that. Um, Sunday night, the return. Brady going back to New England, going back to Foxborough to take on the Patriots. Belichick versus Brady. Oh my goodness, man. This is, this is a matchup that really doesn't seem, you know, it's all too interesting in all honesty, but I mean, it, it the, the, the intrigue of Brady versus Belichick is just enough for me, man. You know, it, this is going to be one fun game, I guarantee you that, on Sunday night. You know, how will Mac Jones you know, prove himself on the biggest stage, you know, on one of the bigger stages of this young season so far? You know, he's looked like a, he's looked like a rookie so far, I mean, that's obvious. You know, the Patriots defense is still there. And the Bucks are still a solid team, despite the fact that they have defensive backfield props of their own, mostly. You know, they were getting exploited by the Cowboys. They were getting exploited by the Rams. I mean, they've just been getting exploited out there on defense. And plus, I mean, there's been injuries in the defensive backfield as well. So, you know, it is what it is there. Um, Bucks, Patriots, going to be one hell of a time, man. I guarantee you that. And finally, last but not least, on Monday night, the undefeated, oh, oops, I almost called them the Oakland Raiders. It's the Las Vegas Raiders going on the road to face the, Sa nope, not the San Diego Chargers, the Los Angeles Chargers. But the Chargers and the Raiders, boy, boy, this is going to be one fun. This is going to be one hell of a matchup as well. I'm telling you, the Raiders have looked like a solid team this year so far. They've looked like a team that can make a run in the AFC. Chargers as well. This is one. This is what. This is what the AFC West is about, man. This is going to be a thriller. You know, I mean, the AFC West is looking like a, the whole division can make the playoffs. In all honesty, the whole division could. You know, Chiefs ain't the Chiefs may be, you know, one and two. They may be at the bottom of the AFC West, but I mean, come on. Come on. Whew, man. You know. Like, it's a duel between Derek Carr and Justin Herbert. You know, Ra Raiders defenses look solid, Chargers defenses look solid, you know, for the most part, like eighty five percent of the time for both these teams, in all honesty. But uh, you know, both of these teams are going to give us one hell of a fight on Monday night, and I cannot wait to see this game. I did not expect to see this game be circled as a big-time game because, I mean, it's Monday Night Football. Monday Night Football really doesn't do anything for me aside from when the Cowboys play, you know. You know, there's only a select few Monday Night games I see each year anyway. So this is like... This is what the third Monday Night game I've seen already this year, which is a rarity so far. A big rarity. You know, so we'll, we'll see what the Raiders and Chargers can do, and we'll see what Week Four can give us. I know there's going to be injuries and stuff like that. You know, probably getting reported throughout the week, and you know, COVID, you know, has messed up some teams. Like Antonio Brown was out last week with COVID. You know, and I know there's probably suspensions and fines and stuff. You know, that for teams, you know, as well. You know, like Leo Collins apparently was like 
Uh, I don't know what happened to Leo Collins from the Cowboys. I don't know what happened to him. Like, apparently he was, like, doing some shady stuff in the back, in the behind the scenes. Oh, I don't know. I don't know, man. I really don't know what's going on with, with that. You know, you know, you know what Roger likes to do. Give out those fines. Give out, give out suspensions. Give out, make this league not fun. But this league is fun in the best type of ways, you know. And although it doesn't look like a week in the NFL where it seems like there's a lot of big matchups, there's big matchups always in the NFL. So we'll see what happens this week. And I will see you Monday night to recap it all. We're going to do this. It's going to be fun, as it usually does. And keep your an eye out on Friday. Channel update on Friday. Channel update on Friday channel update on Friday that is what's gonna happen you know that it's gonna be something new you know for me and it's something new for a lot of people as well so stick around you know for that there's 144 of you now on this channel so congrats to the new subscriber and I hope you continue to you know spread the word the good word of well not the good word because my word is not really that good it's just as opinionated as possible but in any case <laughs> big boy sports saying so long and i'll see you guys friday for the channel update and then saturday night well so, well like sunday morning technically saturday late saturday night for the college football recap and then blah 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 you you guys know what's gonna happen you know anyway peace everybody